Okay, well, welcome everyone to the Colchian Seminar. We are very happy to welcome Alejandro Villaverde today, who will give a talk about analyzing accessibility and controllability of nonlinear systems with differential geometry. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, um, well, I would like to just uh, say a few words. Uh, as you can see, I I come from the University of Vigo. Uh, Vigo is a city in the northwest of Spain. It's in uh, Galicia. Galicia is uh, a region or the equivalent to a US state, if you will. And I'm also affiliated with the Galician Center for Mathematical Research and Technology. Uh, but I'm not a mathematician. Uh, I'm an engineer. Uh, and I'm the, in the Department of Engineering. So um, this talk is uh, probably going to be uh, a bit more on the applied side, let's say, more uh, based on applications than on uh, really deep uh, mathematical results. Uh, with that said, um, I'm going to begin by uh, motivating the, the study of these uh, properties. Uh, and I'm going to spend uh, quite a bit of time in this, uh, I think. So uh, please uh, forgive me if, for those of you who are already familiar with, with uh, controllability and accessibility. Um, this may be uh, not not very new for you, but I think it's uh, it's important to do it. Uh, then I will present some conditions that can be used to test for these properties, and then I will show how to apply them to the study of uh, biological systems uh, in general, uh, and in particular to uh, some case studies that I will show. <clears throat> and finally. Uh, I will discuss some of the, the key points. Okay, so um, uh, intuitively, when we talk about controllability, uh, we would like to talk about uh, the property of being able to drive a dynamical system from an initial state to a final state uh, by manipulating its input and doing it in, in finite time. And um, I would like to uh, relate it a little bit, at least in this initial part of the talk, with another property, which is observability, which is uh, the property that we can uh, determine the internal state of a system, which we are not directly measuring, by observing uh, the input and the output of the system, of the model, maybe in this case. And uh, of course, we have to know the structure of its equations. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about observability at the beginning uh, because um, that's what I, I started studying uh, before controllability. And they uh, classically, they, these two properties have been seen as uh, related to a certain extent. So I would like to, to clarify this before. These two concepts were uh, originally introduced for linear systems by Kalman in the, in the 60s, and they are uh, very classical uh, properties in control theory. And um, what? let's see them with an example. So this is also a very uh, well-known classical example uh, in control engineering, which is the problem of um, controlling an inverted pendulum on a moving cart. So here we have um, a pendulum, which is, uh, well, basically a, a solid uh, bar. and we assume that its mass is concentrated in the middle and so on. And uh, it's it can rotate um, and it's placed on a moving cart. And we can move the cart by exerting an, a horizontal force on, on the cart, just like that. Um, so we only have one input and we would like, typically the goal is to move the cart to some desired position and also to uh, keep the pendulum inverted in its uh, upright position um, at, at that position. Um, and this, of course, is an um, unstable equilibrium because if the pendulum deviates just a little bit from the vertical, it will tend to fall. And it's an, uh, an interesting uh, control problem uh, because it's not trivial and it's uh, well, very similar. It can be seen as uh, an approximation to the problem of controlling a rocket uh, when it takes off. Um, and also it can be related to some other uh, 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 practical problems uh, in control. So 
this system um so if we um, yeah if we can only exert this horizontal force uh, it turns out that the system is actually controllable so we can uh, drive it to a, a different state and uh, even we can stabilize it even even though we're not going to talk about that today and uh, in regard to its observability uh, it depends on the configuration so if we measure for example the horizontal displacement which is called x in the diagram and also the the angle with the vertical uh, which is uh, theta in the diagram then the system is fully observable so we can determine uh, also its uh, angular velocity and angular uh, sorry and um, horizontal velocity um what would need to happen for the system to not be observable um, so for example if we measure just one of these uh, uh, displacements it's not observable and also if instead of the the positions we measure the velocities the angular velocity and the the horizontal velocity then it's not observable either because we cannot infer the the positions the displacements and um, as for controllability, if instead of having this horizontal force, uh, we would have uh, a force that's applied uh, in the uh, only to the rotation, just an, an angular force, it would not be controllable, obviously, because we could not move the, the card. And also, if we consider, this is a two-dimensional problem, but if we consider it as a three-dimensional problem where the card can move uh, along a, a horizontal plane, uh, then uh, it's not controllable if we only can exert a force in one in one direction. Okay. So um, as I said, these two properties were initially introduced for linear systems, and uh, the observability of a linear system is very easy to um, to compute. So let's say we have a model in uh, of ordinary differential equations that are linear and are in state space form. Uh, so here x is a vector of states and y is the, um, uh, the output vector, is what we can measure. If we differentiate the output, we have uh, this expression. And if we differentiate it again and again, we have um, uh, this kind of, uh, of expressions. Now, if we take the, the partial derivative of the output and its, uh, and its time derivatives, with respect to the state x, we have uh, uh, a set of uh, arrays that we can arrange in this uh, so-called observability matrix. And uh, the system is observable if and only if the rank of this matrix is uh, equal to the number of states. So said that the, the system is full rank or has full rank. Okay, and uh, so for the controllability, there is a very similar result. So we also build a matrix, uh, which is called the controllability matrix. And the system is controllable in the if and only if the rank of this matrix is equal to the number of states again. Um, now, if we if we transpose the controllability matrix, we see that it's very similar to the observability matrix. So that's why uh, traditionally it's said that controllability and observability are dual properties, uh, in the sense that if we have a system given by A, B, and C that is controllable, this is the same. Uh, I mean, this is uh, the system is controllable if and only if. Another system given by the transpose, transpose of A, um, matrix C instead of B, and the transpose of B instead of C is observable. So there's this uh, duality here, but be aware that these are two different systems. And in fact, the controllability of a system uh, tells us nothing about its observability and, and vice versa. Okay, so um, that's for linear systems, uh, but for nonlinear systems, we have a different type of ODEs. Uh, and um, the observability 
is uh, also analyzed in a very similar way as for linear systems. We Again, we build an observability matrix, and instead of uh, computing the output derivatives uh, as before, now we have to use uh, lead derivatives, sorry, uh, which have this uh, form. Um, and we again take their partial derivatives with respect to the state. And uh, again, the, re the result is that if the, the rank of this matrix is equal to the number of states, then the system is fully observable. Um, these calculations are uh, a bit more complicated. Um, and now this matrix depends or may depend on, on X, on the state, right? But still, uh, it's the extension from linear to nonlinear is pretty straightforward, right? Even we could say that it's easy unless we consider um, uh, large models uh, with, with uh, unknown parameters in which it becomes uh, computationally uh, uh, more difficult. And this is actually a problem in which I have worked uh, a lot uh, in the last years, but I'm not going to consider it today. So uh, since it's, uh, we're just considering models with known parameters, and so we don't worry about the identifiability of the parameters. So um, hopefully, uh, since controllability is uh, very similar, uh, or at least has this duality with observability, uh, going from linear to nonlinear is similarly easy as for observability, but unfortunately, this is not the case. So the controllability of nonlinear systems is uh, much more difficult to analyze uh, than the observability, I would say. And um, this is in part, well, maybe this is not the cause, but more the consequence. Um, so. As Andrew Lewis uh, said uh, 20 years ago or more, there are actually almost as, as many notions of controllability as there are people who do research in the field. Why? Well, on the one hand, uh, the controllability of a system uh, can be affected by many factors, by the type of inputs, the type of functions of the system, um, the, the time horizon that we are considering, uh, if it's local or global, um, and it's very hard to analyze in general. So uh, as a result, there have appeared uh, many different uh, words, at least, that correspond to um, sometimes slightly different uh, concepts that refer to a similar property, but not exactly the same property. So uh, people not only talk about controllability of nonlinear systems, but also reachability, accessibility, attainability, um, and uh, not in not in every work, not in every paper, they are applied in the same way. So uh, sometimes reachability is exactly the same as accessibility. Sometimes it is not, and also they come in, in different flavors. So we have uh, local and global um, versions, weak and strong versions and so on. So um, this is just a, a little, uh, let's say, initial disclaimer. And um, once we know how uh, how this field is, uh, we can go into the, uh, the systems that we are actually going to study in to see in this talk. So we're going to uh, study uh, control systems in the nonlinear affining control form, which are defined by ordinary differential equations of this type. Here, x is the state vector. Um, it's belonging to a, a state space, uh, capital X. And u is the control input. Um, the inputs are uh, assumed to be restricted to the unit hypercube. That is, they are uh, in, in absolute value less than 1. And of course, if the inputs are larger, uh, this can be incorporated by scaling the, the, the GI functions. And the F and the GI functions are uh, analytic functions. Uh, so they are uh, infinitely differentiable. Uh, that, and they describe the dynamics of the system. Okay, so we can uh, refer to this, uh, this system as uh, a triple called sigma. Uh, 
consisting of the, the state space, the vector fields, and the admissible control set. OK, so for this uh, type of systems, we can define controllability uh, uh, still uh, in a rather intuitive way as the ability to move from some initial state to any other point uh, close to this initial state by means of some admissible control um, for some uh, finite time. Um, and we say that uh, the reachable set is the set of all points that can be reached from the initial uh, point in time at most uh, capital T. And we, we, we can write it as uh, with this reach, sigma, uh, less or equal than T, and x0. And we say that uh, a system has the accessibility property from the initial point if for every uh, possible time the reachable set has a non-empty interior. Uh, that is full three dimensional. And a um, um, stronger property is uh, the so called small time local controllability. And we say that a system is uh, STLC for short, small time locally controllable, from an initial point if the reachable set contains the initial point in its uh, non empty interior. So this can be uh, visualized in this way. Imagine we have a system that's living in a two-dimensional space. If the, uh, the behavior, the dynamics of the system is as in the in, pen, in, in figure A, so it can only move from the initial point X along this line, then the system is inaccessible and it's also uh, incontrollable. In the middle figure, we see that we can actually access, we can actually reach a, a <coughs> sorry, a full dimensional <coughs> set. And this uh, would be an accessible uh, system, but incontrollable because the initial point is not in the interior of the reachable set. And in the right hand uh, figure, we see an accessible and controllable uh, behavior. OK, so now we can uh, go and define some mathematical conditions to test for these properties. And to this end, we need some concepts from uh, geometric control. So first, the uh, Lie bracket, we, uh, given two vector fields, F and G, the Lie bracket is a new vector field given by this expression. Um, where this, uh, this partial derivative here is the Jacobian matrix uh, with, of, of a function G or F with respect to the, to the state vector. And we say that a set of vector fields is a so, Lie subalgebra or Lie algebra if it's a, a linear subspace of vector fields and the Lie bracket is well defined. And finally, we need to define a distribution which is a map that assigns to each, uh, each vector a subspace, um, yeah, a subspace that we will, will call uh, S of X. Okay, so um, accessibility from a point means that we can escape from that point producing reachable sets that are uh, full dimensional. And, uh, the Lie bracket of two vectors uh, defines a new direction to follow, which is uh, possibly independent from the, the two vectors. Right? And if we compute um, higher order Lie brackets, we may get more directions to escape from this initial point. So um, intuitively, we see that achieving full dim dimensionality is connected to the fact that the, the Lie bracket induced fields span the whole space uh, at, uh, at the initial point. And this intuition is, is actually uh, correct. So um, it can be used to define um, the first condition, which is the so-called Lie algebraic rank condition, or uh, LARC for short. Um, and to, uh, to see this condition, we first define the control distribution 
right? which is the one uh, defined by the Lie algebra of uh, the dynamic functions f, uh, g1, and until gm of a system. Um, we're going to to refer to write the the control distribution as delta c. And uh, the LARC tells us that uh, a family of vector fields satisfies uh, this condition uh, at an initial point when the control distribution is uh, full dimensional at that point. Okay, um, so this is um, a necessary and sufficient condition for accessibility. So if a system uh, does not satisfy it, it's not ac ac accessible. Um, and if it satisfies it, it's accessible. However, it only gives us a necessary condition for controllability. Okay, um, so how can we we test this uh, this condition? Uh, well, we have uh, there's a very relatively simple algorithm which is uh, summarized here, and uh, it consists of the the following. So first. At the start of this algorithm, we we associate the distribution. Uh, we have an initial distribution delta zero there, and uh, we associate it with a linear space of, of vector fields, um, which are the this uh, they are the vector fields given by the the, the system itself. This f and g functions, and then at each iteration, we um, uh, enlarge this uh, this distribution by adding uh, some Lie brackets of um, all the other uh, of, of all the possible vector fields with all the the vectors that are in this uh, distribution, and we do this um, until we until the distribution that we obtain is invariant. Uh, at that point, the algorithm stops, and the distribution. Uh, is the control distribution. Okay. Um, so this, uh, the problem with this um, algorithm, I mean, it's relatively uh, simple to uh, to describe and it guarantees us, uh, at the end, it guarantees that it's really uh, computing the, the LARC. However, uh, the problem is that uh, the number of, of brackets that have to be computed uh, grows uh, in every in every step and can reach a very large number. So uh, it can be computationally very expensive. So um, an alternative to this LARC, which is computationally cheaper, is this uh, so-called ARC or accessibility rank condition. Mm. Here I have to warn to warn you again that uh, these names are not uh, totally standard. So some people refer to these conditions with these names, but uh, you can find uh, other other names in the in the literature. And here the idea is to use only uh, vector fields of uh, of the form f plus uh, u i times g, where u i is a constant input, and then the elements of the distribution are of the form of the of the phi that we we can see here. And this gives us a modified distribution, delta i. And the ARC condition tells us that a system is accessible at some at an initial, at a point x0, if this modified distribution is full dimensional for some uh, i, for some iteration, let's say. Um, the advantage of this condition is that in each iteration, uh, just one new element is generated. So uh, this, this avoids the exponential growth of the brackets to be computed. Um, on the other hand, the problem is that it, it gives us only a sufficient condition for accessibility. Um, so um, it's, not, it's not necessary. And of course, it's also not necessary for controllability. Okay. Maybe maybe uh, ask questions and interrupt you. Is that okay? Ah, yeah, sure, no problem. Uh, uh, I was just wondering when you say UI is constant, would that as a function be like piecewise constant when you actually try to 
control a system or you uh, mean constant all like okay. over a longer time horizon um you would be applying the same input all the time um no so it can be it can be a uh, piecewise piecewise constant yeah so because we are um in general we are we, we can use this piecewise constant inputs and also in this uh, when you compute these conditions uh, since each iteration can correspond to a, a a control interval so to speak uh, we can think that it has a, a different constant value at each time at each iteration i don't know if okay. Yeah, okay, thank you very much. Uh, there was also a question in the chat, maybe that's uh, an opportunity uh, to just answer it. Uh, so William Sid asks, are there any dependencies among the F and Gs? Um, dependencies, uh, no, I mean, so F can be any any uh, analytic function of X and so can be the Gs, um, but in principle they are in independent other than that. They they are given, right? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, okay. Um, okay, so so we have um one well a couple of conditions for accessibility. Uh, one of them is sufficient and necessary. Now, for controllability, we don't have uh, a sufficient and necessary condition, at least uh, one that I one that I know or one that is uh, generally applicable. But uh, we have uh, a number of uh, sufficient conditions. Um, well, initially, uh, I was going to present three, uh, but uh, uh, I'm really going to, to show only two, because uh, the second one is really equivalent to the first one in, in, in many cases. And in our tests, uh, for practical applications, we didn't see any, any advantage of using it. So the first condition is very simple, is the linearization condition. And it's uh, actually what it does is to linearize a nonlinear system around the point. So we have uh, the same equation as we, show, we showed before at the beginning for linear systems. And this A and B uh, arrays are calculated as the, well, A is the, the Jacobian of F and B is just the, uh, it's just the the gs okay so uh, the li linearization condition tells us that a system is uh, small time locally controllable if it's linearization around an equilibrium point <clears throat> satisfies um, the the condition that the the controllability matrix is uh, full dimensional the rank of the controllability matrix is equal to the number of states um well i maybe i have to apologize because here i'm writing n and i think at the beginning of the talk i was referring to the number of states as n x so it's just a bit of an inconsistency there okay so um now this is a um a sufficient condition but it's not uh, necessary because even if this condition does is not met the system may still be controllable uh, intuitively, this can be explained because the linearization is simplifying the structure of the system, and uh, this may eliminate essential aspects of its dynamics. So a nonlinear system can be controllable even if its linearization is not controllable. Okay, so a more uh, a more complicated test, but uh, that one that can be sometimes more conclusive is the so-called uh, general sufficient condition uh, introduced by Sussman. Uh, we're going to call it GSC for short. And uh, it's a bit, uh, I find it a bit funny the way in which it works. So um, first to, to, to explain it, we have to, uh, to define that we say that a bracket is of type K, L1, L2, uh, until Lm, when the the fields f, g1 until gm appear respectively k times, l1 times, and and so on in it. And then we say that a bracket is path 
when k is odd and the remaining, the else are even. And we say that a bracket is good if it's not bad. So for example, if we have uh, the Lie bracket uh, that we can see here, uh, here G1, uh, sorry, F, F appears uh, only once and G1 appears twice and G2 appears twice too. So F appears uh, an odd number of times and G1 and G2 appear an even number of times. So this is a bad bracket. Okay, so now the GSC tells us that first, to be controllable, a system has to uh, satisfy the lark at the point. And then if there is a weight, uh, a number between zero and one, such that all the bad brackets uh, of a certain type can be expressed, expressed sorry, as linear combinations of brackets of these types. Uh, I'm not going to read it because it's a bit uh, complicated. Um, well, then the, the system is small time locally controllable. So uh, this is a bit, um, a bit, yeah, a bit involved the definition, but uh, it works. So uh, it gives us a sufficient condition uh, to test for controllability. So uh, if we want to see if a nonlinear model uh, system is controllable, we first calculate the the lark. If the lark does not hold, uh, then uh, it's not controllable either. But if the lark is fulfilled, then um, we can go and check uh, if the, the the bad brackets can be expressed in this type in this uh, way, and uh, then we may have a, a controllability uh, result. So yeah, um, so since there are several conditions, we propose this uh, workflow. So uh, we start with our model, and um, first we have to to see if we want to analyze these properties at equilibrium or not. If uh, if the if it's an equilibrium point, we uh, then uh, can apply the linearization condition, which is the the simplest one. And if it holds, then we know that the system is accessible and controllable. If it doesn't hold, then uh, we have to decide if we want to check controllability. We go to test the lark. If it doesn't hold, then we know that the system is inaccessible and uncontrollable. And if it does hold, again, we have to, um, well, in this case, we went through the equilibrium route, but we could also reach this point through another route. So we, again, depending on whether we are at an equilibrium point or not, we uh, go and test the GSC or not. Well, again, this at first sight, this may seem uh, a bit complicated, but it's uh, actually, I think it's the most, uh, from a practical viewpoint, is the best way of applying these tests. Okay, so we have uh, implemented these conditions in MATLAB, and it's an open source implementation that is available in, in GitHub, and uh, both as a um, standalone tool called nonlinear con controllability, and also within uh, a larger toolbox that's called Strike Gold. And uh, this toolbox was initially developed for analyzing observability and also structural identifiability. So um, in this way, uh, now there's this toolbox can al analyze uh, all these properties uh, with a single definition of, of a model. Okay, and then I would like to briefly show um, how to apply these tests to biological systems. And uh, why to biological systems? Because uh, we are interested in, in, in biological processes such as cellular signaling networks, which are uh, networks of biochemical reactions by which the cells uh, transmit and process information and eventually make decisions. So this is a very simplistic depiction of a uh, signaling process. And in reality, signaling networks can be uh, very, very large and very complex. So it's not uh, easy to analyze their uh, controllability. Um, well, I'm just uh, a brief comment. Uh, so many biological systems, both the inputs and the states are non-negative. So this uh, may seem uh, conflicting with two requirements that we, we set at the beginning about the, the values of the inputs and also the, 
the equilibrium condition that has sometimes has to be met, but um, just uh, just uh, rest assured that this can be easily overcome with some coordinate change. And I'm not going to go into more details now for, for lack of time. Okay, so I'm going to show a few examples of biological systems. And uh, the first one is this a very simple model of, uh, this is not a signaling network, right? This is a, a very simple uh, linear model of glucose regulation with two states. And in this case, oops, sorry, the linearization condition uh, tells us that the model is uh, controllable. We can also obtain this result with the GSC. If instead of two states, we add a third state and we add uh, now some nonlinear dynamics, we have this so-called uh, beta IG model. Um, and now uh, we, we want to test it around non-equilibrium points, so we cannot apply the LC, but uh, we can apply the, the LARC and it tells us that this system is uh, accessible. Okay, uh, next is a pharmacokinetic model uh, with four states. Again, this is um, a linear model, I think. So it's larger, but still it gives us a similar result. And now uh, I'm going to show three examples of signaling pathways. So this one is uh, the EGF AKT signaling pathway, which is a very um, well studied uh, pathway uh, that plays a role in several diseases and, and so on. Right, and this is a nonlinear model with uh, nine states. And uh, if we linearize it around the equilibrium, um, this linearization is not controllable according to the linearization condition. Uh, but since this is a linear, uh, sorry, a nonlinear system, we cannot conclude anything from the LC. Now, if we apply the LARC, we uh, see that this system is inaccessible. And uh, we get a similar result for this NF uh, kappa B signaling pathway. Um, yeah, that's also a it's also a nonlinear system uh, of a similar size. And uh, the final example is another uh, very well known signaling pathway, which is called the Jack Stat, and it's again a nonlinear system of uh, with uh, ten states. And um, in this case even though the LC uh, tells us that uh, uh, the linearization is not controllable uh, and cannot tell us uh, anything else, then the application of the LARC test uh, away from equilibrium tells us that the model is uh, indeed accessible, unlike the previous ones. So uh, yeah, we have uh, all kinds of results. Okay, so to summarize, we have seen um, well, these two properties, accessibility and controllability, which inform about the capacity of a system to reach neighboring states, basically. Um, uh, the difference is that uh, conceptually, controllability is the capacity of to reach uh, any neighboring state and then to, to go back to the initial point, if you want to see it that way. So these are easy to analyze for linear systems, but are uh, more difficult for nonlinear systems. And he, we have seen uh, some algorithms to check these properties in nonlinear systems defined by affine in inputs, ordinary differential equations. Uh, specifically, we have seen a sufficient condition for accessibility and uh, one uh, more computationally more expensive condition, which is also sufficient and necessary, which is the LARC. And we have seen uh, two sufficient conditions for controllability. One that is based on uh, linearizing the model. Uh, this is called the linearization condition or LC. And a second one that is, let's say, built on the LARC. And uh, it's this so-called generalized sufficient condition or GSC. And uh, when we apply these tests to uh, a number of biological systems, we found that uh, most of the models were accessible and some were also controllable. Um, here I, I, well, I have to, to mention that um, in the paper that I'm going to, to cite uh, right now, um, we analyzed a, a few more models or quite a few more. 
and I only show the some selected results here. So overall, we found that most of the models uh, were accessible and some were controllable. In some cases, we couldn't uh, determine the controllability. And by the way, we found some uh, systems, uh, not biological systems, but some uh, dynamical systems for which the uh, linearization condition was inconclusive. But then we were able to prove not only the accessibility uh, with the LARC, but also uh, uh, controllability using the GSC. I mentioning this because uh, this was not the case in any of the biological systems that I showed bef uh, before. And uh, <clears throat> I would say, interestingly, we found that uh, several examples of inaccessible systems, all of which are signaling pathways. So what does this mean in, in a biological, from a biological point of view? So this result may indicate some limitations of the biological circuit. And on the other hand, it may uh, suggest that uh, the model is not really describing uh, well the, the system. Mm -hmm. So it may be that in reality, the biological system has this property, but the model is not really reflecting this. So this uh, suggests could be used as a suggestion for further investigation. Um, so for lack of time, I couldn't go into, into many details. Uh, if you're interested, um, we have published uh, all these results in a, a very recent paper. Uh, it was published, uh, I think, last, last month. Um, here's the reference. And uh, I would like to conclude with mentioning some open challenges. So from a, a more biological viewpoint, uh, one open question is, um, to, to find out exactly what, what it means that a system is not accessible or not controllable. Uh, for example, in the context of a signaling pathway or also uh, pro probably it will, be, it will be interesting to also explore it in the context of synthetic biology and, and so on. No? So what, what does it really mean? Um, from a computational viewpoint, uh, we still need to develop more efficient algorithms um, uh, because these tests are can be computationally expensive. In some cases, we did not obtain results because uh, they, the algorithms just kept running forever. Um, and also from the theoretical viewpoint, there are, um, there are challenges. Uh, so because, for example, there is no uh, generally applicable uh, necessary and sufficient condition for controllability. And also we would like to have a more detailed characterization of inaccessibility. So uh, for linear systems, you have the, when you have a, a non-controllability result, you can also divide the system in the controllable modes and the uncontrollable modes, but here it's not, it's not uh, easy or trivial how to do that. And uh, yeah, finally, I would like to, to uh, acknowledge uh, our sponsors and also to mention the co-workers. Co so Sandra is the PhD student uh, who did uh, most of the, of the computations and developed uh, most of the algorithms. And uh, Antonio is uh, also a professor here in the University of Vigo who collaborated in this work. And uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for this interesting talk. Are there questions? Uh, please just unmute yourself or write in the chat if you have a question. Okay, I have a question. Um, when you linearize and and you say maybe it's uh, controllable under certain conditions, how does the how does the practical result affect the actual system after the linear? I mean, compared to when it's not linearized. Um, no, I'm not sure if I understand. So when you linearize and you find that the system is con that the linearization is uh, controllable, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, so, so you you so you know you just the sorry. result when you actually implement it in real life. Uh, is it controllable? So non yeah. So yeah, the nonlinear, the original nonlinear model is is also controllable. Yeah. And only if the linearization is controllable. No, no. the The original 
the nonlinear model is controllable too. So if, if the linearization is controllable, the, the original model is controllable too. So linearization, let's say, uh, uh, simplifies the model, uh, but um, in a good way. So uh, uh -huh. let's say that it, the, 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 a positive con uh, result, uh, a result that tells us that, uh, uh, that the system is controllable, is guaranteed to hold also for the nonlinear original model. Okay. And so, so that, that's a that's a theorem, I suppose. Yes, yes. Uh, there's a, so there are there are proofs for that. Um, you can find the references in, in in the paper if you're interested. Okay, thank you. Are there other questions? Okay, I have another one. Yeah, please. Um, if you don't mind. Uh, computationally, you define the uh, the delta sub i. I think with a head sign, if I remember, uh, by choosing a basis uh, to get to the next generation, next iteration, right? So uh, let me go to the to the slide. Maybe so yeah. you're going. You're talking about the the algorithm for for this for the lark, maybe? Yeah, right, right. Um, maybe. Yeah, that's why you said that. Let, let each upper i be a set of vector fields that generate the delta i. So is uh, or or you're talking about this one here? Well, I mean, let's go to the previous slide first. Then. Okay. Yeah. Right. right. So so here the computation would does the computation depend on your choice of these bases of these uh, vector field bases? Uh, yeah, no. So, I mean, so the result does not does not depend on the on the choice. On the choice. How about the computation? Uh, I'm actually not sure about that. Uh, how do you pick the choice? How do you? I mean, in in practice, how do you choose this basis, this set of vectors you that generate delta i? Okay. So, yeah. So. Um, yeah. Well, so I initially we just take the same the same uh, vectors of the that are the, the f, the and the g's. Right, but they need then... to be dependent, right? You don't you don't know that you said you have no condition on these things. Yes, so exa exactly. Exactly. Yes. If another zero, they could generate, let's say, you know, a very low dimension space, right? Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. You're right. See. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. That's that's a, a good question. I I am. Um... To be honest, I'm not sure right now how how it's done uh, because uh, I did not Im uh, implement it myself. Um, I mean, so... you can always choose a basis. I mean, once you find the, you know, form the the uh, the, the, space, the span, and then you can just use whatever mean algebra you want to to get the you know a set of vector fields that generates. But um, but that, certainly that that choice could affect the computation, right? I guess so. Yes. Uh, to be fair, uh, no way to do that. Yeah. I, uh, to be honest, I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think you're right, but I don't want to, to give you a, a very detailed answer because I'm not sure, uh, about how, how we are doing it uh, right now. Um, uh, and I don't want to give, a, a an inaccurate reply. Uh, so, uh, I mean, this, the way we we did it, it can be checked uh, by by inspecting the code and and if not, uh, yeah, I, I I know that I know that. But see, see, I'm just thinking about this. Let's say I, I don't know if you're familiar with the simplex algorithm for linear programming. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Where, where there is a general algorithm, but then there is a choice of what is called the pivoting rule. Uh, how how to you know go from one vertex to another in the uh, in the polytope. Uh, so in here is the same thing, I believe, that if you study how the choice of these bases may affect the computation, um, you know, it, it may be a worthwhile study. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, no, I don't know what, you, what you're saying. Yeah, uh, I really, I hadn't thought of that. Uh, but yeah, I will I will check this. I yeah, mean, thanks. So, so the first thing is you have to show that, of course, the answer, the, the result, um, 
for example, the stopping time, uh, how many iterations before it stops, could depend on the choice, right? And uh, I, I don't know, it may, it may not, but if it, if it does not, then you've got to prove, I mean, there's a theorem to prove. And also the invariance, you know, instead if it's invariant, then stop. So, so, so how many iterations before you can get to the invariance, if, if, it, if, there, if it could be invariant after some finite iteration, right? In fact, um, hmm. is there a priori, um, a priori uh, notion or idea of uh, that it is finite, that, that this thing will stop, this, this algorithm will stop? Um, sorry, can you repeat this last question? Okay, so so the last question is, so you have an algorithm, you said if it is invariant, then stop. So mm -hmm. are you, do we know that after a finite number of iterations, it will stop? Ah, okay. Uh, yeah, I see. Uh, well, um, so for this, um, I, I think... In, Actually, for this simplified algorithm, there's no guarantee. But uh, to be to be uh, uh, but to be fair, um, so this is like the uh, initial naive algorithm that basically computes this uh, test. But we have implemented some some modifications, um, I, uh, which are the ones that we really use for the tests, and and they are uh, these uh, modifications. Uh, what they do is or, or the um, the goal is to improve the computational efficiency and ensure that they they uh, they finish in a in a some finite number of iterations. Even though sometimes uh, we found that uh, due to computational limitations uh, we cannot reach that number and we have to abort the calculations. Uh, but that's a different matter, I guess. So actually, actually, I I think I had in the as an appendix I had just copied the. The modified algorithms, but maybe not. Uh, so we have an adaptation here of the LARC test, uh, but actually, and then, yeah, we have these three extra algorithms, uh, but probably they are a bit uh, uh, complicated to test uh, to to inspect now. So okay. these are these are provided anyway in the paper. Um, also, by the way, um, I have a comment. Uh, a comment here. So uh, today I detected there's a, a typo here. Ah. So if you, if you then go and 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 check these algorithms in the paper, um, for example, in the second algorithm, there's a step here. Right. Um, I don't know if you're you're watching my pointer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I okay. That you said if the two ranks are different, then uh, okay, exactly. So so right. this so, so that's a good criteria. That yeah, but that this is wrong. So this is this should be oh. an equal sign, not an unequal. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so this is an important, this is an important error. <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, I just realized you have you have a, a condition you can test to see that it's not accessible, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all right. Yeah. And not oh, accessible, okay. of course, it's not controllable either then. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Also I had a sh very short question. Um, I think in your example where you had nine variables. I think that was maybe some pharmaceutical model or so. And then uh, what was it? This, this one, one this yeah, it says inaccessible. So in that case, um, I guess, was it possible to determine which part of it makes it inaccessible or, or put the other way um, to find out what is accessible in, in this in this uh, application? Uh, I guess, uh, for, that, for that's the, a good question, but uh, currently we don't, we don't have the answer. We are we this is something we we want to explore. Uh, this is one of the open challenges that I I mentioned because it's a very important question. Um, and actually, and I, I also wanted to uh, to mention now that you you talk about this example that um, the inaccessibility is not a trivial result because from the input you can you can actually. Um, Access, so to say, it's connected to to all of the all of the nodes, right? Um, so visually, or even applying other methods, because there are some, um, uh, let's say, network controllability methods 
that are based on the on the connectivity of the nodes on in the network to determine the the accessibility but they they work for uh, linear systems but uh, when there are uh, nonlinear systems uh, they may not give uh, a correct result so uh, applying one of them to this uh, model for example would uh, tell us that it's controllable but then it, it looks like it, it's it's really not the case um, okay. but yeah okay. it's a very good good point uh, i mean we are uh, we want to know what why this is not accessible what is the accessible part so probably uh, i don't know yeah i'm not yeah. going to <laughs> Yeah, sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Are there other questions? Yeah. Are you familiar with the work of Michel Fleece? Uh Well, I know I know some of his work uh, about uh, flatness and, and that, uh, but uh, probably uh, I, I wouldn't say that I'm familiar with with most of it. I see because um, I think he, I think he was the one that actually uh, well, I, I don't know about you know, all the different kinds of controllability and accessibility and reachability notions, uh, but I think about the the controllability and observability kind of thing. It, the the theoretical answers are related to uh, differential dimensions, and that's even for nonlinear system. Um, I forgot the the full literature, but Foreman F O R M E N, I believe from uh, either Norway or somewhere, had, had written a book that summarized all that. You might want to take a look and check, check it out because um, I don't know how practical it is, of course, but on the theoretical side, um, these questions are related to dimension of differential fields. Yeah, how yeah, yeah, you're right. There's a, there's a connection there. And I know that uh, Fleece has worked on, on this uh, on this, um, I don't. Uh... In the nineteen nineties or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, uh, earlier, or even earlier, actually. The Foreman yeah. book is in the nineteen nineties, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I can. Uh, yeah, I mean, we we didn't use directly any of his results for this for this work, but we uh, we read some of of these these papers uh -huh. uh, at some point and. Uh, yeah, they're definitely uh, related. Yeah, you're right. All right, that's all. Thank you. Thank you for Thanks. Time. I'm sorry, Dr. Sid, who who were you talking about? I, I couldn't hear the name. I think it's Michel Fleece, F-A-L-I-E-S-S. -S. Um, he's, he's a French. Uh, I think he's still active. Uh, but he, he's into a lot of area, and, but, but he's the first one that applied differential algebra uh, methods and also notions to define uh, controllability. In, I mean, to define a lot of concepts in control theory. Um, Foreman, F-O-R-M-A-N, I believe, uh, has written a book. Uh, in fact, it was part of his thesis, but it publishes a book. He no longer works on this area, but um, but you could, you should be able to look up. If, if you like, I, I could send the, the information, I mean, the, the book title and all that to you. Um, after I look it up. Okay, thank Another you. Another source of information would be books by Pomare, also in France. In <laughs> France. A whole different area. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Other questions? If this is not the case, we thank the speaker again. Thank you very much. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, we resume next Friday. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for inviting me and, and thank you for attending the talk. Thank you very much.